Uh, welcome to the Greek grammar course. Uh, today, uh, uh, we are going to study about the gender concept. Uh, today's class is the second part. Uh, last class, the gender, uh, we will study about Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 14. Uh, as a reminder again for the gender, gender shows the role of noun. And masculine, the parsing code is shown as M. Masculine concept is giver, attribute, which means result, symbol, or identification. Also, the masculine noun is the uh, minister. Uh, feminine noun uh, is shown the uh, parsing code as F. Uh, the role of the feminine is the receiver, productive role, the object of ministry. And then the third one, the neuter. Neuter show the uh, parsing code as N and combine status, masculine and feminine noun, and then filled with internal, and then mediator position. So we study about those concepts and apply to Matthew chapter 5, uh, 13 through 14. Today is the second part. Uh, we are going to study a little more uh, using the Bible verses, uh, Jan, John chapter 15, uh, verse 1 through 3. Uh, let's read the 15.1 uh, uh, with the Greek text. Ego eimi he ampelos he aletine kai ho pater mu ho georgos estin. Uh, as you see here, the parsing code we can apply. Ego eimi. Ego. It says N P N X S. So N P means personal pronoun. And then the third N is nominative. So as I as we study already about the uh, uh, the noun, there is a five cases. So N is the nominative, G is the genitive, D is dative. A is accusative, V is vocative. So here, the third position on N in noun, they show the case. So that is the nominative. So nominative can be a subject of the verb, right? And then first person singular. So obviously, first person singular, it is I. Okay? So ego means I. Amy. Amy, V I P A X S. So V is verb, I is indicative. Indicative is a simple active sentence, right? And then the present active. So V I P A. And X S. So X means first person, S is singular. So first person singular is the subject of this verb. Amy. So Amy is the be verb and present active first person singular. Then means exist. Exist. So ego Amy. In New Testament, Christos Jesus talking in many different places. Ego Amy. I am. I exist. Talking about the existence. So I am the light. I am the living bread, and I am the truth, I am the way, I am the life. All those are is Amy verb, Amy verb, which means exist. So English translate M, M, okay, same as exist. So I am, ego Amy, I am. And then next one, He. He is show the D and F S, right? What is D? Determiner. Determiner. N is nominative. F feminine. S singular. So determiner, nominative, feminine, singular. So Greek word only has the definite article. Okay? 
So the definite article determiner is the. What is the role of the determiner? Determiner is the indicate, indication. And then limitation. Okay? So for example, there is a Smith. The name is Smith. And then when we call the Smith, it can be more than 100, more than whatever number, right? But when we say the Smith, that means only one. It indicates that Smith, the Smith, and it also limits that person. So that's the role of the determiner. So DNFS, the, this determiner, belongs to the next one. But in Greek sentence, it doesn't always come before the noun. Okay? Sometimes that determiner locate in another place in the sentence. So in order to find out, this determiner indicate which noun. So in order to find out, we have to look at the parsing code. Case, gender, number has to agree with the noun. So that way we know that determiner indicate which noun. Okay? In Greek sentence, there could be a couple of determiner existing. Okay? So in order to find out this determiner talking which noun, so always look at the parsing code. And then see if which determiner agree with which now. So as you see here, NFS, NFS, which is Ampelos. Ampelos. Ampelos is noun, nominative, feminine, singular. Feminine singular. So this determiner belong, indicate Ampelos. Ampelos means vine. That's why I translate ego, Amy, he, Ampelos. I am the vine, vine. Ampelos, that translate as vine, it is a feminine noun. So again, reminder, the feminine noun, uh, feminine role of noun concept is what? Receiver, receiver, and then producer, producing and receive, okay? That's why I am the vine, I am the vine. And then next one is he, again, Another determiner show off. And then, Aletine. Aletine. So, he is dative, noun, feminine, singular, determiner. And then, Aletine. Aletine. What is A? A is adjective. Adjective. And then, N is nominative, feminine, singular. Again, DNFS. NFS, NFS. So this determiner indicate aletine, aletine, which means the true, the true. Uh, we haven't studied the, uh, the adjective yet. Uh, whenever adjective comes, sometimes determiner does not come with adjectives. Okay? And then some other case, like this, the adjective, the determiner plus adjective. Depends on there is an adjective, depends on the adjective has a determiner or not, the translation can be different. So when we study on the text about the adjective, we are going to learn about that in more detail. So this is an adjective. So the role of an adjective, adjective has a determiner, noun has a determiner. So adjective modified to the noun, right? This noun. So, and then comma. So, ego, eimi, he, ampelos, he, aletine. So, the, this translation we can do, I am the true divine, right? I am the true divine. Which means, here I is who? The Christos Jesus, right? Christos Jesus is the true vine. Christos Jesus is the true vine. Move on to the next one. Kai ho pater mu ho georgos estin. So kai is the conjunction which translate into English as end. Conjunction, end. And when kai is used as the adverb, 
it translates as also, also. But here is the conjunction, so we translate and. Again, the ho. Ho is the determiner. Determiner, nominative, masculine, singular. Okay? So in Greek grammar, ho, that's the primitive and basic, which means noun, masculine, singular, ho. Okay? Ho, which means the. Pater. Pater, what's the parsing? Noun, nominative, masculine, singular. So, NMS, NMS. So we know this determiner indicate pater, right? So pater means father, father. So the translate you can do, and the father, and the father. And then mu. Mu is NP, same as here, NP, right? Personal pronoun. And then G is genitive. I just explained about the case, right? So one of the case, nominative, we just see that. And then the genitive. Genitive concept is what? Possession and starting point, right? Origin starting point. That's the concept of genitive. And then first person, singular. So first person singular, same as first person singular, which means I, here, since it is genitive, it is my, right? So the, my father, the father of my, my father, ho georgos, ho georgos. So again, ho is DNMS. We just say the determiner, nominative, masculine, singular. And then, Georgos, noun, nominative, masculine, singular. So we know this ho is the determiner of Georgos. So Georgos translated as husbandman, but Georgos is the farmer, farmer. When you go to 1092 on the strong number, ten ninety two. Okay, so Georgos is what? A land worker, i.e. farmer, farmer. So this is a compound word, uh, 1093, which means ge, ge. Ge means soil, but ge is earth, earth. Okay, ge is earth. And then 2041, okay, here it says ergon. Ergon means work uh, from a primary Ergo, ergo means to work. So work, earth, earth work. So here says strong dictionary, land worker, which means farmer, farmer. And then the English King James translated as husbandman, husbandman. Okay. So my father, the farmer, the farmer, my father, my father. Farmer, and then the verb is here as tin, as tin. So verb indicative, present, active, third person singular. So who is the third person singular? My father, right? Who is third person singular? The farmer, right? So as tin is the B verb. Amy is the B verb too, but Amy used as a fourth person singular. When Amy becomes the uh, third person singular, Amy changed to as teen, as teen. But same, be verb, okay? Be verb between Amy and as teen. Amy use, a, use first person singular, and then as teen use third person singular. So that's the only difference, but both of them is be verb, which means exist. So my father is the farmer, okay? The farmer is the, is my father. So now we all finish to translate John chapter 15 verse 1. So here we know Christos Jesus' role is here is what? The feminine role, right? Feminine role, which means receiver and producer, as I just show you here. 
receiver and productive role. Okay? Receiver and productive role. So Christos Jesus is sent by Father in heaven, right? So he, his role here is receiver. He received the hurema, the word of God, explanation of the word of God. He received that hurema from who? The Father. He learned from who? He learned from Father, which is a feminine role. So what is the purpose to learn? To produce, right? To produce. To produce the fruit. That is the purpose to learn. So that's why here, Ampelos is the feminine, which is the producer by receiving from the farmer, who is the father. And then the truth, the true Ampelos, true Ampelos. Okay? So, Aletine, true, that is also the feminine. Okay? So, true vine. So, what the meaning is, Christos Jesus is the true vine. That means there is also not true vine, isn't it? Okay? There is not true vine also. We can think about that. And then, Pater Mu, my father, the farmer, as tin. So, with that, all, I am the true vine and the, my father is the farmer. So we can translate like that. Talking about the, uh, the vineyard, you know, the, the vine grow on the vineyard, right? And then we can look, uh, in order to understand these sentences, and then the uh, father as a farmer, he is the giver. He is the minister. He sent the Christos Jesus as the true vine, true vine. And then uh, we can go to the, uh, the, the research through the vineyard and the vine uh, in the Bible. So uh, we know how it used in the Bible. So we know those concepts. Okay. Uh, let's go to the uh, Genesis 9.20. You know, Genesis 9.1 starts from the, uh, it's talking about the Noah, right? So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you, the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth, and on all the fish of the sea, they are given into your, head, into your hand. Every moving that, that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things even as the green herbs. And then when we go to down the 20, and Noah begin to be a farmer. So Noah is a farmer, it show here farmer, and he planted a vineyard, vineyard, okay? And then here, and you see, uh, Noah begin to be a farmer than New King James. And when we go to King James, and Noah begin to be man, on husband. He planted, and he planted a vineyard, okay? Halar, halar means to pierce, okay? Pierce through, like a digging, piercing, piercing through, break, breakthrough, okay? So Noah is what? Ish. Ish means husband. Husband or man. In Greek word is aner. Aner translates as man, which is an adult man who can become the husband. So husband or man. So Noah is man. Noah is husband. So man of man Noah. Man of Noah. Noah. Okay. Begin to pierce through. Okay? Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Breakthrough what? Ha Adama. Ha Adama. And then Ha Adama, it doesn't say here. It just translated as farmer. Okay? Farmer is not Ha Adama. Okay? Farmer is not Ha Adama. Ha Adama is what? Adam. And He is uh, suffixed. 
So hoping the Adam. Ha Adam is hoping the Adam. When we go to the uh, uh, how to form the, uh, the, the first Adam, we can quick go there. Uh, we can come back to here. Let's go to Genesis 2.7. And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So look at here. Bechel Yehovah Elohim et Ha Adam Apar Min Ha Adama. Ha Adama. So look at here. Ha Adama. English translate ground. Okay. New King James also translate ground. King James translate ground. Okay? So mean is of, which is out of, out of. So Yehovah, Yehovah Elohim begin to form. Okay? Et ha Adam. So et did not translate, but I introduced a couple of times. Et show the timing, period, right? So et means the first letter of Alep to the last letter of Path, which means begin to the end, beginning and end, which is whole processing, whole processing, starting point to the finish point, okay, beginning point to the conclusion, conclusion. So, at ha Adam, what that meaning is, first Adam to become the last Adam. So that is the intention, Yehovah Elohim, ministry to hope Almighty. So, Et Ha Adam is the ministry to Hope Almighty. That's the Yehovah begin to form. Okay? What is the material? Material is a par, a par. It says the dust, but there is no determiner. Okay? Now, masculine singular, just dust, dust. So, Yehovah begin to form ministry to Hope Almighty. Alep, first. Adam to become the last Adam using the dust out of Ha Adama. Ha Adama. So how can be the first Adam become the last Adam? By hoping the Adam. By hoping the, the Adam. Then who is the Adam then? Based upon 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? First Adam is the living being, like here says, right? Pushken Josan. It says, it says in the Apostle Paul says, uh, Greek word Pushken Josan. And the second Adam is who? My Lord, our Lord, who is Christos Jesus. And then the last Adam is the life giving spirit. So, in order to become a first Adam to become the last Adam, you have to hoping the Adam. Who is the hoping the Adam? Who has to hoping the Adam as a First Adam, the second Adam. Second Adam has to hoping the, the first Adam has to hoping the second Adam to become the last Adam. Okay? So go back to that uh, Genesis chapter 9 again, at the Noah, Noah 9.20. So Noah begin to break, break. So one Noah, he become what? Ish, adult man, okay? Perfect man, righteous man, Noah, goes to break, break, break what? Ha Adama, Ha Adama, hoping the era, hoping the second era, okay? And Nata, he begin to plant, he begin to plant what? Kerem, Kerem, vineyard. He begin to plant the vineyard. Okay? So, that's what it says. Uh, the vineyard is the place what? Hoping the Adam. Hoping the second Adam. So, that's why absolutely, on the vineyard, the vine has to grow, isn't it? Okay? So, based upon the foundation, hoping the Adam, Christos Jesus is sent by the Father, who is the farmer. Okay. Let's go to the Isaiah 5.2. Uh, we can start from 1. 
Now let me sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stone and planted it with a choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst and also made a vine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Okay? The farmer expects to get the good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And verse 3, And now on the inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, please between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it shall be burned, and break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. Okay. So when there is no rain, that comes from the heaven, that comes from the Father, you cannot bear the good fruit, isn't it? And verse 7, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So in the house of Israel, the true vine, Christus Jesus, is, has come. So vineyard is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah are his pleasant to plant. So in the house of Israel, okay, the men of Judah is planted. Okay? So what is the Judah means? Hoping the existing one, right? That's the Judah, the, name, the meaning of the Judah in Hebrew. That's why the salvation comes from where? The Jews. Okay? When we go to the, uh, the conversation between woman in Samaria and Christos Jesus on the John, and then the salvation comes from the Jew. Why? Because the meaning of Jew is the one hoping the existing one, hoping the second Adam. Okay? So he looked for justice, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. Cry for help. Okay? And when we go to the Hosea chapter 10, verse 1, Israel empties his vine. He brings forth fruit for himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he has increased the altar. According to the bounty of his land, they have embellished his uh, sacred pillar. So, they increase the sacred pillar. And then verse 2, their heart is divided. Which means, they have two hearts, right? Now they are held guilty. He will break down their altars. He will ruin their sacred pillars. So, Israel emptied his vine. Okay? Because he bring forth fruit for himself. So that's why the Christos Jesus is the true vine, true vine. And then, and then Pater, the father, is my father is the farmer. And let's let's look at the, the father, farmer. Okay? When we see the father, there is not only father in heaven, and there is the father who's talking on the earth, right? We can go to, first of all, 6-9. Uh, 6-9, nine. Six, nine, the Father in heaven. Matthew 6, 9. It's the Lord's Prayer, right? In this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your, uh, your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Actually, I was preaching uh, on Sunday sermon about the Lord's Prayer. 
And then if you uh, want to uh, learn about this more, you can listen about the, uh, my, my sermon that is on the YouTube. Uh, start from the Matthew 6, 9. Our Father in heaven. Okay? Our Father in heaven. Look at the original Greek text. Pater, Father. Whose Father? Hemon. Hemon. First person plural. So, first person plural, English translate our. I explained the uh, plural is the concept of living. So, first person is I, myself. So, father of my living. And then, where is father of my living? And toys uranos. In, and is in. In the, uranos is plural. In the, heaven living. Okay? So, until your living become the heaven living, okay, the father, father is not manifest. Father is not become one with you, with you. So, this father is in heaven's living. And then we can go to the uh, John chapter 8, verse 41. Ah, on the Matthew, we, we go the uh, 23, 9. Before we go there, 23, 9. And then start from the 1. Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So scribes and the Pharisees, they are sitting in the Moses' seat. What does that mean? They are teaching the Moses' law, which means Moses' law is called in Hebrew, Torah, right? Torah. And then verse 3, Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, then observe and do, but do not do according to their works. For they say and do not do. So why? They teach the God's commandment as what? Man's tradition, right? And then he keep saying that, and then verse 8, But you do not call the rabbi, rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. And then verse 9, Do not call anyone on earth your father, your father. Okay? So here, pater, right? Pater is father, father. Patera me kalesete hemon epiteskes. On the earth, on the earth. So, do not call, do not call, do not invite. Kaleo is invite. So, do not invite, okay, your father on the earth. So, now we know there's a father existing on the earth. And then there's a father who is in the heavens living, okay, heavens living. That's why those are Pharisee and Sadducee and scribes here, they are at the Moses seat, and then their father is what? Their father is the one on the earth. That's what Christos Jesus says here. And then more detail is talking about John chapter 8. Forty-one. We can start from 41. You do the deeds of your father. Okay, you do the deeds of your father. Pharisee, Sadducee, and scribe, or those Jews, you do the deeds of your father. So, who's father of them? They thought that their father is the only one true God who is in heaven, but in the eyes of Christos Jesus, who is sent by the true father. And their father is, they call the father, they invited the father that is on the earth. That's why Christos Jesus says, you do the deeds of your father. That is on the earth, right? Then they said to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one Father God. One Father God. And 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. And 44, you are of your father, the devil. The devil. So they believed the God, they thought, but really they are believing the devil. Devil. 
So there is a devil who acting like a only true God. That's what it means here. So you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. So that's why Christos Jesus, we just saw that from the John chapter 15 verse 1, right? I am the true vine, true vine. So that vine has what? The truth, truth. But their father, the devil, they thought their father is the father in heaven, but their father is on the earth. So they have no truth, okay? When he speaks a lie, so which means people who does not understand the word of Christos Jesus, then their father is the devil, and they are not in the truth, and then they are liar. Whatever you teach from the Bible, okay? Since you don't have a discernment, you cannot explain what is the true father, what is the devil, then you have to prove yourself, and then you have to provide those discernment and then distinguish. If you cannot explain, then obviously your father is who? Obviously your father is devil. So when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. But they still use then resources from the Bible. Okay? But the mystery of kingdom of heaven is not fully understanding yet. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. You do not believe me. Okay? So in Hebrew word, father, father is Abu. Okay? Aleph and then Bet. That's the father in Hebrew word. We know, uh, we, uh, we learn already the Hebrew alphabet meaning. Aleph. Aleph is fourth person, right? Fourth person, which is myself. Okay? Also, myself is as a fourth theorem. Okay? And then the concept of Aleph is what? Human nature. Okay? Okay? Then the second word is bet. Bet is what? House, right? House. So, like we just learned, there is a father in heaven, okay? And there is a father on the earth, okay? So, when you build a house using your knowledge, so using your own knowledge means what? The, your father is devil, right? You become the house of what? Your house is devil. If your house is devil, okay? But when you meet the Christos Jesus, who sent by the Father in heaven, and then the Christos Jesus say that, come, learn from me, right? Come, learn from me, okay? I will give you rest. And then yoke with me, yoke with me. Let's walk together. Because I learn from my Father, I can give you the, the mystery of kingdom of God, so you have a full understanding. So, the disciple, who follow Christos Jesus. They learn from Christos Jesus. They learn the knowledge of God. Then knowledge comes from tree of life. But before you met that preacher and Christos Jesus, you are nothing but to learn the knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge, good and evil. That's what it is. So the true father, okay, is a trainer. He's a trainer, make you to become a what? House of God. So house of the devil has to transform, has to change to become the house of God. That is a training process, training process. That's why when we go to the uh, Hebrew 12, 7, it's talking about that. Hebrew 12, 7. We can start from... Uh, Five, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged courage when you are rebuked by him. Here, chastening. Look at the chastening here. 
paideia, paideia. And King James translates paideia as a chastening, right? Chastening. Paideia is the education. Paideia is the training. 3809, we can look at the dictionary. 3809, paideia, tutorage, education, training, and then disciplinary correction, disciplinary correction. So King James translates this one, chastening, chastisement, instruction, nurture, okay? Father provide the nourish, father provide the training, father provide the education, education. That's why when we go to the, uh, um, so uh, we can keep going and then move over to the one that I, I'm about to say. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, if you endure education, if you endure training, that's why Christos Jesus says, take my yoke. That is what? Training process, education process. And then deny yourself what? Take your own cross and accompany with me. You have to take your own cross. You have to receive the training, the education. So if you endure training, God deals with you as with the sons. For what son is there whom a father does not train? But if you are without training, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Not sons. So if you hesitate to receive the training, to receive the correction, then you deny the Father who is in where? Who is in heaven. So we are nothing but a star from the what? The house of devil. Because we don't have the knowledge of God in the beginning. But when the fullness, the time comes appointed by Father, and God will send forth the Son to, to you in your life. Then you are start to train. You are start to educate the knowledge that comes from the Christos Jesus from Father in heaven. That's why the, when we go to the Second Timothy, verse 3, here, uh, 17, uh, 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. I already explained about this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Incorrect translation, right? Given by inspiration is Theo. Phnustos. Theos is God. Phnustos is adjective spiritual. So all, spirit, all scripture is what? Spiritual God. God's spirit. God's spirit. So, Bible is talking about the spirit. Bible is not talking about history. Bible is not talking about the physical, external, outside things. Talking about the God's spirit. Okay? And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Those are whose processing? Father's processing. Father provides you to make you the house of God. That the man of God may be complete. Totally equipped for every good works. Every good works. Let's go to the another one, the First Corinthians 4.15. Uh, we can start from 14. I do not write these things, Apostle Paul say, to shame you. But as my beloved children, I warn you, 15, for though you might have 10,000 instructor, instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Look at the, here, though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, 
Ehren. Ehren. Ehren ist not, not do. Ehren ist der uh, Subjunktiv. If. If. And then the car is because. For. Murios. Murioi. It translates as 10,000. It means great number. Great number. We can go to 3463 on the dictionary. Okay. So Murioi says 10,000. By extension, in number of only many, plural of apparently pr uh, primary word, properly meaning very many, very many. So 10,000 is not real meaning on the murioi, it's just expression of very many, a lot, a lot. That's why the King James just adapted this one, 10,000, which means a lot, very many, okay, very many. So, very many. Haida Gogos, your living echo. So if your living have, okay, if your living may have a lot, very many Haida Gogos. Haida Gogos is an instructor's instructor. Haida Gogos is the one who teach the plain child, Pais. We can go to 3807. 3807. Okay. So Paida Gogos here says, boy leader, servant whose office it was to take the children to school. Tutor. Tutor. But this one, Paida Gogos, Pais. 38, 16. Pais is what? Plain child. Plain child. Okay. Okay. You see, plain child. And then 71, ago. Ago is to lead, to bring, to go. Okay? So that's the Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Training the pies at the elementary level. Okay? So in Christ, in Christ, if your living has very many Pythagoras, but, Allah, but, your living does not have polus pateras. Your living does not have many fathers where and god christo in christo jesus dia to evangelio through the gospel ego hemas i can now you your living which means here is i begotten timothy timothy then who is the father the apostle paul is the father of timothy so he provided training he provided education. He gave him a hurema so to have the knowledge to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But the Paida Gogos, they can provide. They cannot be a father. They are just using as a instructors. That's why when we go to Paida Gogos 3807, 3807, we can go to Galatia chapter 3. Okay? 3, 24, 25. Galatia, Galatian, 3, 24, 25. Start from 23. But before faith come, before faith came, who is the faith? Christos Jesus himself is faith. Before Christos Jesus came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith, which would afterward be revealed. Revealed. So the mystery of the kingdom of God is revealed by Christos Jesus. Until the faith come, it is kept. It is not revealed yet. And 24, therefore, the law was our what? Tutor. Tutor. So here, translated as tutor, and then the first Corinthian translated as instructor. And then, King James translates this word as our schoolmaster. Okay? Or same word, paedagogos. Paedagogos. So our tutor, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. Christ. So whoever learned from Christos Jesus, they are, they are doing the role of father. Because they learned from the Christos Jesus. But those tutors, paedagogos, they only, they only teach the pies, which means 
fourth day and fifth day church leaders. As we just uh, mentioned from the Matthew, Pharisee, Sadducee, and Scriber, who's in the Moses seat, which only can teach you and train you about what? All the commandment based upon 1 John, right? Old commandment and new commandment is the same. No difference. But until the faith comes, you keep the commandment as what commandment? Or commandment, which means commandment of man, not as the commandment of God. That's why they cannot understand Christos Jesus' speech. Because Christos Jesus is also talking about the Bible. But understanding is totally different. They keep the God's commandment as a man's tradition. And then Christos Jesus explained using the grammar, the mouth of God, and the spiritual, spiritual book, Bible, spiritual book, spiritual God. He was talking about that. So same thing here, tutor and the father is totally different. So the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a what? Tutor, under a tutor. Schoolmaster, tutor, instructor, here, pedagogos, the same thing, right? So that's why the Galatians chapter 4 is talking about guardians and stewards, right? For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So until you meet the preacher who sent by Christos Jesus, who learned from the Christos Jesus, you are all under the who? Pythagogos. Pythagogos. That's why when we go to the chapter 4, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. So the status is what? Pythagogos, who learned from the Pythagogos, you are slave. Though he is master of all, but is under who? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. So who is guardians and stewards? Before the faith comes, you learn from the guardian and stewards, Pythagogos. Verse 3, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. To redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Christ. So now from the today's lesson here, here, so we understand the, uh, the I am the vine, true vine, true vine. Okay. So like a Noah, Noah breakthrough, Noah who is an adult, Noah breakthrough, and then uh, the vineyard is what? Ha Adama, ha Adama. So there is not only true vine, and then and then if you are on the true vine, ha Adama, on the ground, okay, you have the what? Good grapes, right? But those are Israel and Judah, they have what grapes? The wild grapes, he says that, right? Okay. So that's why until the full the, the time has come, the faith has come, okay? We were nothing but have the fruit of wild grapes instead of the good grapes, right? So we are going to learn the next uh, the later on the sentences here. So that's why Christos Jesus is the true vine. And the Father, so we just learned the Father who's in heaven and who is on the earth. So your Father is who then? Okay? Your Father is who? Until you have a discernment between the Father in heaven and then Father on the earth. So your Father obviously is Father on the earth. You are calling, right? And then Apostle Paul says, He is the Father who begotten through the gospel to begotten the Timothy, and then father is the farmer, okay, farmer, working on the, on the earth, so father is the, father is the farmer, okay, so next to class, uh, we are going to study the next one, John 52, and 
we still got a little more time, so uh, we can we can read the sentence, okay? Okay, pan clema en emoi me peron carpon. I ray auto kai panto carpon peron katai ray auto kina pleona carpon pere. Okay, that's the John chapter 15, verse 2, uh, Greek text. So one more time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read again, and then uh, we can finish the, today's class. Pan clema en emoi me peron carpon aire auto kai panto carpon peron kataire auto kina pleona carpon pere. So we are going to translate this sentence. Uh, next class, and then uh, we are also going to look at the uh, parsing, and then there is the masculine uh, neural noun is here, clema, and then the masculine noun, carpon is here, so uh, we are applying the concept of genders on this word, and then we can look up the uh, Bible verses to find out uh, the meaning of this verse, okay? Then I will see you next class. Thank you.